Welcome to the first edition of Celebration of Sports Virtual Style. We are so excited to applaud our student athletes as they have given our community so much to celebrate. We can't express enough how much we miss seeing you all practice, compete, or simply gather in the weight room, chatting, laughing, and having fun. Each and every one of you brings us so much joy and we hope we can bring that to you tonight as we recognize the 2019-20 year in sports. We have a jam-packed program inspired to make you laugh, cry, and think. Because as the great Jim Valvano said, to me, there are three things we should all do every day. Number one is laugh, number two is think, and number three is you should have your emotions move to tears because, ha be because of happiness or joy. But think about it. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. That's a heck of a day. Well, here's a celebration meant for you. We have a few surprises in store along the way. So grab your seat because it's game time. We'll kick this off with a 15 minute interview with our keynote speaker, the incredible coach, Lindsay Gottlieb. The testaments they told, the moon and its eclipse, and Superman unrolls the suit before he lifts. But I'm not the kind of person that it fits. She said, where'd you wanna go? How much you wanna risk? I'm not looking for somebody with some superhuman gifts, some superhero, some fairy tale bliss. Coach Lindsay Gottlieb is a trailblazer in the sport of basketball. She was the head women's coach at UC Santa Barbara from 2008 to 2011, where she led the team to two Big West championships and was the 2009 Big West Coach of the Year. In 2011, she was named the women's head coach of the California Golden Bears, leading the team to their first ever Final Four, along with their first Pac-12 Conference Championship, and the most wins ever by a Cal women's basketball team with a record of 32-4. and In 2013, she was named Pac-12 Coach of the Year, and one of the four finalists for National Coach of the Year. On June 12th, 2019, the Cleveland Cavaliers of the NBA hired Coach Gottlieb to be an assistant coach. Lindsay Gottlieb became the first NCAA women's head coach to be hired by an NBA team. We're absolutely thrilled to have her with us as we celebrate our student athletes. I hope you're ready for this exciting ride. Welcome, Coach Gottlieb. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy to be here joining you. I know it's a little different virtually, but I'm very honored to have been invited and to spend this, this time with you and, and hopefully, you know, all of your student athletes who are watching. How did you build your confidence in your professional and personal life? Professionally, it comes down to, you know, work on your craft, master your craft, whatever that is. I think that confidence is built through you know, through studying, through repetition, I would always tell, you know, our my players that I coach, like you earn your confidence, right? If you've taken that shot 10,000 times, well, of course you should be confident in it. Like if you're a good shooter, then you, you earn that confidence. Being authentic uh, is really important because if you're being your true self, uh, it's just a lot easier to be comfortable in your own skin and then you exude confidence. Um, you know, I would say in my, in my personal life, like maybe it took me a little bit longer uh, to figure out that, um, you know, you have to set your own standards. You have to not try to please other people or please some societal thing of what, you know, a, a, a 13 year old girl is supposed to be or a 15 year old girl or a 25 year old woman, right? You have to um, understand that like the, the thing you should be aiming for is that standard within yourself that you care about, not anyone else's standard. So I think once you find that in your personal life, it's easier to be, to be confident. What is a piece of advice you would give your younger self now? I think I would, I would tell my, myself, you know, particularly in that like middle school age that like the things that, that are unique about you, Lindsay, if I was talking to myself or the things yeah. that make you a little bit different, those are actually the things that are going to help you find your happiness professionally and personally. So like embrace it as early as you can. Right. I think I, 
I figured out pretty early um, what makes me happy professionally and, and, and to go after that. Uh, and, and also just like, you know, who I am and what type of person I want to be. But it's hard when you're 13, 14 and, and you just, you see images of what, you know, or a, or a notion of what you're supposed to be. So I think I would tell myself early, like embrace those things that might be a little different about you um, that, that you're, that you don't like as much when you're that age. But it, in the end of the day, I think there are things that, I, that have made me who I am. Talking about who you am, who you are, you know, this incredible basketball coach, how did you know that was the path for you? It came from a family where uh, there were a lot of lawyers in the family. And also we had a lot of people who love sports. So our dinner table conversations were often about somebody's court case or some political thing or about sports. So if you had asked me back then, I think I would have said that I wanted to be a, a commentator or a writer. Um, and it wasn't until I was a collegiate athlete that I decided I, I wanted to coach. And it was really for two reasons. Um, the first was that I just, I love X's and O's and I'm, I'm kind of a nerd like that. Uh, <laughs> And so I kind of discovered in college, wow, like people watch film and figure out game plans for a living, like that's cool. Um, but even more importantly, I think what pushed me into coaching was the fact that I had a lot of friends that were college athletes and some of them had great experiences and some of them had really terrible experiences. And it was usually informed by how much they liked their coach or their teammates or how they felt about the team culture and the team chemistry. And so it kind of occurred to me while I was in college, um, there are not that many places where you can have such an impact on 18 to 22 year old, you know, young women at the time is what I was thinking. And so for me, like this idea of combining like the X's and O's and the impact on people, uh, it made it clear to me while I was in college, that I wanted to get into coaching. And uh, from literally my first job, my first job was at Syracuse um, right after I graduated from college. And I can honestly say from the beginning, I was like looking around my office being like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I get paid to do this. And I have felt that way every single day since. doesn't mean that there have been hard days or tough losses or sacrifices made, but I've always felt very grateful to have found a career that, that I just love. At what point did you know, I want to take this to the NBA? I never felt like anything was out of the question, which is, I, I think, just a gift that maybe my parents gave me that like, right no dream was too big. Um, so I was really kind of invested in my career. I, I've always been super into women's basketball. I've always felt like I planted my feet, you know, where, where they were at when I was an assistant or when I was at Santa Barbara. I, I was never always looking for the next thing. However, right. I was always a huge fan and student of the NBA. I just think, you know, how could you not be? So even when I was coaching women's college basketball, I would pull clips from the NBA or I would watch or I went to some different training camps. I think it wasn't until Becky Hammond got hired by the Spurs that it became a more, you know, realistic thing to even think about. I think that's why it's so important, like representation. You can't even think about it until you see it. Um, so I would say over the last five years or so, people I know in the NBA have begun to ask me like, hey, how do we get more women involved? Or where's the future of this going? But usually those conversations were about how do we get more young women involved, you know, interns or people looking to break into the profession. There weren't many conversations about what do you want to do? And then um, a mutual friend connected me with the, the um, GM of the Cavs, Kobe Altman, and he asked to meet with me. And I thought it was going to be one of those type philosophical type conversations. And he actually came forward and said, Hey, you know, we're building something here. We want to put together the best possible staff. I know what you've done. I know your background. We want you to be part of it. And that was really the first moment that it became a real possibility. Right. And from there, obviously, there were some decisions I, I had to make, but I just, I felt like I couldn't pass up the opportunity. I loved Cal. I loved what I was doing. I wasn't trying to get away from anything, but this dream job kind of presented itself and I had to kind of face my fears and right. take a challenge. And that's what I did. How do we instill it's okay to have this feel of failure? It's okay to fail. And what does it look like when you do? Absolutely. I mean, I would say for coaches and for athletes, our failures are really public. Like it's just different than anything else, right? Um, you know, if, you, if you're a lawyer and you lose a court case, unless it's something famous, it's not, it's not in the newspaper, right? It's people have failures daily at work, but sports and athletics are a different, different animal with that. So I think I kind of found this formula from myself that was helpful, um, you know, whether it was a, a, you know, a loss of a game or, or you lose a recruit or something. The first thing is I gave myself space to, to grieve it, right? To, to be like, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> so 
not very long, like you can't dwell in it, but I think you have to let yourself feel it so that you can get to the next stage, which is figuring out what went wrong, right? So as a coach, it's, man, this feels terrible, but then you get to the film and then you start to figure out what went wrong. And then the, the key part is making a plan to move forward. Like, what are you gonna do about it, right? A lot of things happen to us in our life, but I think the key thing is how do you handle it? And the thing that really helped me as a coach is that that next piece, the how are we gonna move forward and the message behind it, I knew that you know, 14 or however many young women in that locker room were looking to me for that message. I'm really curious is how did you earn the confidence of the players in the Cavs locker room? And was it more important to be relatable or competent, or a little bit of both? I would say literally almost equally both, right? I think that, that what athletes care about, whether it's an NBA athlete or a college athlete or high school athlete is, first of all, like, do you know your stuff? Uh, and can you make them better? So there's no question I had to be competent. Um, and I think, you know, again, as, as a woman in a male dominated field, I have a little bit of an internal pressure to be not just competent, but really capable, right? Like I have to be better, you know, than, than what you think is um, average or competent. Um, so there's no question I had to be competent. And, but the next thing is um, they really value um, your personality and if you're genuine and if, if you're authentic and if you care about them as a human being. So I feel like my you know, journey with this team in, in terms of what it's been like for me to kind of fit in, it's been equally those two things. I, I think, um, you know, when I delivered my first scouting report and I'm just kind of up there by myself talking about, you know, the Celtics and how we're going to defend them. It was a moment where like, it was a comfort zone for me because I knew what I was talking about. And I think then they have a respect for that. Uh, but also I think just in the conversations and getting to know people and the human touch uh, was a big part of it as well. I want to know at what point, and during the transition to the NBA or during the season, did you really feel a sense of, I, I, I belong here? From day one, it was really interesting to me that like there was this big media push and asking me all these questions about, you know, how different is it to coach men or what is it like to be a female in the NBA? And yet, as I was getting all those questions externally, internally, the organization from the players to the other coaches to the front office really literally from day one made me feel like it was nothing different. Like I belonged right away. Now, of course they, you know, they, they were ordering women's gear for the first time and they, they had to build me a locker room and they were taking those necessary steps. But in terms of the feel, it, they really made me feel like I belong from day one. But I would say in terms of moments of the season, there's two things that stick out. Uh, there is that first time um, that I delivered a scouting report. Uh, it happened to be, uh, it was a, we had a preseason game, but we were, um, in, in a crazy kind of story, we were at Dan Gilbert, the owner's home, because we had played in Detroit and did like a special team trip to his, his house. And then we were going to Boston and I had the Celtic scout and coach was like, okay, you're going to deliver the scout in Dan's home. So now here I am with like the owner watching and the whole front office and the team. And yet there was this feeling of just kind of me, just kind of getting into my zone and being like, this is basketball. This is what I've done for 20 years. And it was a moment where, you know, I was sitting on a sofa and I had like Tristan Thompson next to me on one side and Kevin Love over here. And I'm like, this is just basketball. So I think kind of doing my first scouting report was a big moment for me to feel like I belonged. And then I would say there was another moment where we were on a road trip um, and, you know, your relationships develop with guys as the year you know goes on. I, I was new, um, right. but uh, there was a time when we were, traveling from one city to the next and so we were kind of just on our own for the morning before we caught the plane and i went down to the, the breakfast restaurant with my computer i was going to work on my scout and kevin love was sitting there and uh, i sat down next to him and I, I ended up never opening my computer uh, we sat just sat there for an hour talking about everything from you know life to my career to his career you know and he talked about kind of what resonates with him with coaches in terms of you know people caring about him and yeah. and I, I just was sitting here this guy makes 30 million dollars a year he's a hall of famer and the things that he was saying about what he needs and wants from a coach were just things that I feel like intrinsically is what I, I believe in and so that also made me feel like okay like I, I belong here like you know I, I I can do this this is something where I can add value to to him but also to the organization so I think those are some moments I, where I felt like I, I belonged with this organization. What advice you would like to give to our current senior class as they face ending their senior year? Um, absolutely not how they expected um, and getting ready to head off to college. I would say that the first thing for like, you know, kind of like what I mentioned with, with 
handling, um, you know, failure in some sense, right. that allowing themselves the space to, to grieve it a little bit. To me, it doesn't mean that you don't understand that this pandemic is really important or that people have had greater losses, you know, than, than losing a, you know, a, a senior graduation or something, but it's a real loss. I mean, I mean, it's things that are important to them. And I think it's okay to take a moment and, and grieve that and say, wow, this is hard. Or, or, you know, we were a little unlucky that this happened, you know, during my senior year. But I think the move past it part is understanding that what you're going through right now is actually going to make you more capable of handling all the adversities that are going to come. I found as a college women's basketball coach that the number one indicator of success for our players was their ability to deal with adversity. I mean, more than how talented they were, more than, you know, how prepared they were academically. It's just stuff is coming at you while you're in college. So if you've had to deal with this and go through some tough things, it's going to make you more prepared, you know, to deal with, you know, things that are coming in. And so ultimately, I think it could be a blessing in disguise that this has prepared you, you know, for the rest of, of, of your life, even though it's hard to miss out on some of the things. And then the other thing I would say is connect how you can. So even though it's not your typical celebrations, take the time to do what's important to you and your family and your friends to make sure that this part of your life is celebrated and it's meaningful. I just can't thank you enough for joining me today to speak to our student athletes. And it truly is, you are a trailblazer and we can't appreciate your time more and your words of wisdom. And we are big fans and you are now forever an honorary Gator. Um, awesome. <laughs> so I, I thank you. Thank you. Likewise. And hopefully someday I can come visit your school. I checked it out online. It's pretty, seems pretty amazing. Um, and hopefully you'll all follow the Cavs a little bit. We have a great you know, group of, of guys and we're looking forward to getting back on the court. And, you know, part of the reason I took this job is so that young women can say whatever it is that they want to do you know maybe they have um someone to look to who did it even if it's not in the basketball field but go be that ceo you know go um you know push yourself to, to be whatever it is that that you want to be thank you coach gottlieb for your words of wisdom and paving the way for women in sports at this time we would like to recognize our fall and winter sport award winners with a short award presentation
congratulations to all of our award winners. Next, let's recognize our dedicated four season and three season student athletes. Hi, my name is Sam Solomon and I am in eighth grade. Ever since sixth grade, I have played four middle school sports a year and they've all been a big part of my life. I never would have made the friends that I made or gained confidence to try new things without sports. Each new team and season provided opportunities for fun memories, new friendships, and new skills. My strongest friendships all stem from Cassie Sports, and not only was I able to make friends in my grade, but in others as well. I also really enjoyed getting to know and learn from the high school student coaches. At Cassie, I have been able to try sports I have never played before, but will continue playing because of how much fun I had. I hope future middle school students decide to play four sports and enjoy them as much as I did. This year's middle school four sport athletes are Ida Bisgard, Lila Cole, Nola Dorley, Sulia Gale, Kate Hirsch, Nyeka Itu, Delilah Kaplinski, Charlie Laurel, Callie McElhenney, Perry McElhenney, Charlotte Michigan, Megan Newby, Tonvi Prasad, Lorelai Rohrbach, and Kaylin Yip. Congratulations, everyone. Being a three season athlete is different from being a specialized player. While some three-season athletes might specialize in one of their three sports, today we are celebrating their versatility. We might not excel in everything, but you can count on us to show up to spring practice the day after winter season ends. Over the years, I've realized that each player on a team has something to contribute, whether that be physically, emotionally, or mentally. We've come together to celebrate all Casti athletes today, although I would like to extend a special thank you to our three-season athletes. You put your time and energy into three different sports this year, making yourself, your team, and our Castilea Athletics program stronger. Thank you for bringing honor to the name written across your uniforms each day. Please help me in celebrating the following three season athletes. Parisa Braun, cross country, soccer, track and field. Pip Carlson, cross country, soccer, lacrosse. Caitlin Chow, Water polo, basketball, swimming and diving. Tallulah Seal, water polo, basketball, swimming and diving. Donia Garachorlu, tennis, basketball, softball. Lulu Gunati, tennis, soccer, track and field. Daniela Henderson, cross country, soccer, track and field. Kaylee Spencer, tennis, basketball, track and field. Kelly Yang, volleyball, soccer, track and field. On behalf of all athletes, three sport and specialized, I'd like to thank our athletics department for pushing us to be the best players we can be and for encouraging us every day to find a healthy balance between school and sports. Go Gators! Congratulations to our outstanding four and three season student athletes. We appreciate your commitment. It's now time for the highly anticipated highlight video. Thank you to the incredible Ms. Elka Teichman. I messed up tonight. I lost another fight. I still miss the but I just start again. I keep on down. I keep on hitting the ground. But I always get up now to see what's next. 
three on the key track, back four. As long as you show up every day and like you put in the work, you're already doing so much. The advice that I would give is just to like take a chance in middle school. I kind of like bounced around a bunch of different sports and never really found my place. And like looking back, I never would have guessed that as a freshman I would be a goalie and that I would love it so much. I think there's like a really awesome sense of community, like not only at the team, but like Castellet generally. Even if you mess up in a game or something, everyone's always behind you. And I think that's something really amazing. Every day I can count on having that break where it will make both my body and my mind feel better about whatever is going on from that day. Sports has always been something that I can fall back on and it's something that if I'm nervous for a presentation or something, I can always think back to a time where I had to command or I had to like support my teammates and then I can focus on the task at hand. So much shared experience, um, so many tough workouts, but also um, so much fun along the way. So that really bonds us together. I run during the winter and during the summer and it's just not the same because I love running but I love the team more and it's like that's what running is to me is the team. I just wanted to say thank you to you guys for making my senior season so much fun. incredible coaches who have each dedicated 10 years to Castilea Athletics. Please help me in welcoming junior Anjali Kambam, who will be speaking about Coach Brenda Villa. Castilea water polo would not be the same without Brenda. Anyone who has been lucky enough to have been coached by her knows that Brenda is an incredible leader and role model in and out of the pool. She motivates us every day to work harder and be better for ourselves and for our team. She has taught us the importance of perseverance and compassion, how to be driven and competitive, and what it means to be part of a team. I joined water polo in sixth grade, and since then, water polo has become such an integral part of my life. The pool has become a second home and my team a second family. I'm sad that next year will be my last, but comforted knowing the pool and water polo will be there for many others to come. I can't imagine water polo without Brenda, and I can't imagine Castileo without Brenda. Brenda, thank you for always being the most supportive and compassionate coach. Thank you for always being someone we all look up to and admire greatly. Thank you for inspiring us to get after it. Congratulations on your 10th year of coaching. I'm so grateful to have been here for the past six. And now for the frame reveal. Congratulations, Brenda. Thank you, Anjali. Thank you, Castilea. It's been a great 10 years coaching such driven, dedicated student athletes. The second coach we will recognize is someone I work quite closely with. Please help me in welcoming senior Cordelia Yu, who will speak about Coach Karen Wickers. Coach Wicker's 10 years of accomplishments and dedication to Castilea attest to her excellence as a tennis coach, but she is so much more than just a coach to me. In 2016, I was the only new freshman joining the tennis team and didn't know anyone. Coach Wickers went out of her way to welcome and get to know me, even though she was the coach for only three weeks that year. Our short interaction made a huge impression on me, 
And it was because of this that I decided to join the tennis team the following year. Fast forward to my senior year. At our Siena Catalina tournament, we had a girls' night where the students went to a room to play psych and to use beauty masks I brought for the team. When we heard two firm knocks on the door, instead of being told to go to bed, Coach Peters and Coach Wickers waltzed into the room and joined our face mask spree. We all screamed in delight. My memories of Castilea tennis are filled with fun experiences like this that show Coach Wickers' character and fun personality. What made Coach Wickers the best coach for me is that she knew there was more to life than just hitting a perfect cross-court ground stroke or making a powerful serve. Having graduated from Castilea herself, she understands that some days you barely sleep to turn in an assignment or that you need to miss practice to celebrate your birthday with your family. On these days, she didn't just dismiss my struggles, but instead she would check in on me during practice to see how I was doing and truly listen to what I had to say. During these conversations, Coach Wickers told me stories of her high school experience and shared thoughtful advice to me about how to manage school, sports, and stress. She told me that coming to tennis practice isn't always about hitting the perfect stroke. Sometimes it's about just taking your mind off of schoolwork and exercising with some friends. Coach Wickers knows that life is more than just tennis and coaching. And because of this, Coach Wickers, you have made me stronger and more resilient and I'm sure many others on the team can say the same. So, Coach Wickers, thank you for your support and dedication, and most importantly, thank you for being my life coach, mentor, and friend. Oh, thank you, Cordelia, and thank you very much. I'm honored. Um, I want to thank Mary Jo and the athletics department for being so top-notch and always supporting us, and Cassie for your leadership and dedication and enthusiasm in making our tennis team the best ever, always. And to the girls, I love the opportunity to come out on the court and share with you a sport that I love and to help you recognize um, that there's a lot more to tennis than just hitting a ball and being on a team is very important. So thank you very much. And to the seniors, remember tennis is a lifetime sport. So I hope you all will stay out there and, and keep your love of the game going. Thank you. And for the second frame reveal, congratulations, Coach Karen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we would like to recognize Drew for the incredible work he has done for Castilea over the course of his two years with us as our graduate assistant athletic trainer. Please join me in welcoming senior Anna Davidis and sophomore Caitlin Chow. For those of you who don't know, Mr. Meister has been working as Ms. Surface's assistant athletic trainer for the past two years. For the months he spent being both a full-time employee and student, he's shown us what it means to be both hardworking and resilient. His humor, thoughtfulness, great advice, and dedication to his work have been such an essential part of the Castilea community. From practicing with the teams to making sure that we stay in one piece, Mr. Meister is always there for every student, whether they're an athlete or not. From hyping us up before games, to encouraging us to take care of our bodies, to being understanding when we don't, Mr. Meister has been one of the best athletic trainers we could ask for. No matter what time of day it is, he'll first ask how you're doing and then see what he can do to help you. Whether it be with hilarious jokes, or just his level-headedness. The fitness center has become a second home to many of us students. It has become a place for people to hang out during lunch and free periods. Mr. Meister, thank you so much for literally keeping me in one piece, physically and mentally, throughout the school year. Mr. Meister, thank you for putting up with my constant frazzle brainedness and for always keeping it real. From both of us personally and from every athlete at Castilea, you are an incredible friend and have truly become such an important part of this community. You'll be missed. Thank you guys very much. I'm so appreciative of everyone at Castilea for supporting me and welcoming me from day one. I'll miss the Casti community so much. Thank you so much, Drew. You're the best. At this time, we would like to, like to recognize Mr. Jim Pickett, our class of 2020, and then conclude with a very special surprise. Be sure to stay to the end because you absolutely do not want to miss the finale of Celebration of Sports. Jim, 
Thank you so much for your support and guidance over the last six years. It has been a great privilege to work with you as you have allowed our department to thrive, empowering us to reach high. We are going to miss you tremendously. We can't wait to schedule home and away games between Castellea and Front Ridge Prep. We will call it the SoCal NorCal battle. Good luck with your next adventure, but remember, you will always be a castigator. It's it's If there's life in the east, that's where I will go. Born in the streets, I know where I'm from. If you asking for me, you already know. Turn up. Where the vibe is, I call my home. The air that I breathe, the same everywhere. So where's the party? We on the street. Cause I'm gonna be there. The air that we breathe, the same everywhere.
Kristen. Graham. That was epic. Above and beyond incredible. So legendary. Truly amazing. Along well, Jovi, you just hit a grand slam. And a special thanks to Bill Birch, Kathy's husband, for assisting with the making of the video. We hope you all enjoyed our celebration this evening. Before we say goodnight, we would like to thank the following people. Thank you to our outstanding faculty and staff for your unwavering support of our incredible student athletes. Thank you to our exceptional communications team, especially Tanya and Elka, for your excellent creativity. Thank you to the incredible Jamie Sullivan, who is the mastermind behind making this virtual celebration a reality. Thank you to our amazing student athletes for your hard work, commitment, and resilience. Thank you to our entire coaching staff for your leadership, support, and guidance. Our teams are lucky to have each and every one of you. And thank you to the incredible parents and guardians and families of all our student athletes for your unbelievable support. And a special thank you and congratulations to our amazing senior parents. Thank you to my wonderful staff, Patrick, Cassie, Jesse, and Drew. You are the dream team. We love sports. We miss sports. We hope to see you all on the field, court, track, or pool soon. We hope you have a great night. Ready, Gators? Gators on me. Gators on three. One, two, three. Gators! Gators. Good night. Bye, everyone. Night. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. We miss you. We miss you all so much. <laughs> have a great night, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> That was awesome! It was amazing! <laughs>
next level is so good. Everything combined was awesome. Great. Yeah, I did. You already, as you know, so many requests. Did we have this? Did we have a copy of the soundtrack? That, that chat was blowing up. No, we celebrate our team now. Happy that. Great night. You got your 250 two, three times. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Awesome, Anjali. Hold on, Cecilia. Thanks, Caitlin. Oh, thank you so much, Caitlin. You're there, Anna. You are awesome, Anna. You know you love you, Anna. I need to hear that the full thing. Look forward to helping and send it to you. Jamie will uh, dump it in. Oh, yeah, there's our girl. <laughs> Thank you for all of you, what you've done. It's so much fun. So much fun. Living life is fun and it just be fun to get our share of this world. Yeah, here's a hoop. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll do a hug too. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much. We know we don't get depressed. Here's what we call. I saw some.